You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. As your business grows, you grow and evolve. And there's all the lessons, insights that you gain along the way until suddenly one day you realize that you're you're at the end of an era. You've got gathered all these lessons and you're ready for that next level in your business. You've actually got to the point where you're ready for a new chapter. Um, so what are the signs when you would know that you're there, when you know that you're ready for that next chapter and that it's happening so that you can be proactive about it. You can actually set your vision and your intention for the next chapter and be able to lift yourself up to that next level of you in your business. Well, that's what I'm talking about today in this episode. I'm sharing my own story this year of how I realized that I had reached the end of a chapter where I got to the point where I was ready for the next version, the next version of me, the next version of my business and bringing it all together in alignment with the intentions that I've set for my business and for how I want to operate it. So please stay tuned because I've got a few announcements. It's also the 100th episode. Woohoo! So I've got plenty to share with you today. I'm looking forward to it. Please stay tuned. It's coming right up. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Osborne. And in my 23 years of business and marketing, I've built many brands to become multi-billion dollar companies. And just in the last 10 years, I've built two online businesses of my own from my dining room table with two little babies running around at my feet. I've made it my mission to inspire you to get out of your own way and become the successful business owner who's living the lifestyle you really desire without all the hustle. This is She's the Business podcast made by women for women. This is your weekly dose of motivation and inspiration. Wow, we are at the 100th episode of She's the Business today. This is so exciting. I'm just absolutely thrilled to be here with you today. And I want to take a moment just to say my thank you, my appreciation for you for tuning in, listening in and being part of She's the Business podcast. This has been a crazy year. It hasn't been quite one year since I launched the podcast and to be hitting 100 episodes, two episodes every week without fail since it started, I'm just actually quite blown away. And because it's 100 episodes, I thought, well, this is time. We're, we're kind of starting a new chapter and now we're getting into the hundreds. There are a couple of changes that I'm going to be bringing to this podcast, which I'm about to share with you in a moment. But I thought that with this theme, starting a new chapter, I've got a great story, you know, to share with you that I thought might be special for this 100th episode. It's really the story of a huge lesson um, that I've learned this year in my business that I feel could be relevant and useful for you as well. As you would know, if you've you know, been around for any length of time, which clearly you have in our life, in our business, you know, we reach these stages where you know, it's like the end of an era, we start a new chapter. It happens in our personal life. It happens in our business as well as we are always evolving. You know, we're humans, we're living, breathing things. We're consistently, continually evolving, learning, changing and adapting. And often these are really small shifts. And then every now and then there's a, there's kind of a bigger shift. It's like we get to the end of one phase and we're really starting something that feels a lot newer. It feels like you've reached that top of the level you're at before you'd kind of got to the end and especially in business it's like wow you've actually now broken through you're ready for the next level in your business and that's exactly what happened to me a couple of months back and yeah it's it's interesting because part of it is it, it can just happen but often there's a whole lot of things that lead up to it happening and I think as well a lot of you you need to be in that place where you're ready to be aware of it where you're ready to step through the door where you're ready to turn the page and start the new chapter and yes there's self-awareness that comes into it 
and that readiness that only you really can bring or have. So the question you might be asking is, well, how do you know when you're ready for a new chapter? Like, how does this actually come about? Because it doesn't just happen because you decide, oh, I'm sick of this. Okay, I'm ready for a new chapter. It's not like that. This is actually about you evolving and your personal growth that leads you to a place where you almost have peeled back a layer. I'm not sure what's a good analogy for it, but it's like you're stepping into that next version of you. Like you've gained so many lessons and insights and learnings in the level you've been on that all of a sudden you're ready for that next level. You've actually grown to that point where you've got some new goggles on, you've got some new vision happening. You're at a new place and you can see a, a new path for yourself. So let's dive into it. What actually happened? Well, earlier this year, I was highly motivated as I always am. I'm a very driven person. I love to I love to achieve. I think it's just that feeling of achievement. I'm probably addicted to it. I call myself a high achiever. I'm a chronic um, achiever. I want to always be feeling like I'm achieving stuff. So yes, I'm very motivated. That means I do a lot of things. And it got to this point where, wow, I was, it was just feeling really heavy, you know, and I had then a couple of people say to me, which is obviously synchronous timing as well, but you know, like, wow, you're doing all of that. You know, how can you even be running that business with how few people you have, you know, myself and a couple of VAs in support. And they were sort of blown away by what it was that I was doing. And I thought, well, part of that is, of course, that I've automated my business and I've got it running smoothly and smartly, but yeah, it actually, it feels heavy. I've got a lot of great big rocks on my back that I'm carrying around. I'm trying to make it all work. I'm trying to deliver to the standard of what I expect and what I feel is, is good and valuable and worthwhile. And, you know, it felt like, I don't know how much longer I can keep on holding onto all these rocks and keep moving forward. Like I'm really, my energy was expended. That was the first sign. Once I'd seen that sign, then I started to notice, hmm, there are actually other ways I can see signs of this being maybe too much, too heavy for me right now. In my body, physiological signs, I was tired, I was stressed, I was putting on weight um, without, you know, doing anything to put on weight, like I was exercising, I was trying to do all the things. And it was like there were all of these little signals that I hadn't been paying attention to. I hadn't really been paying attention to them over the last year because I was so energetic and motivated and, and pushing forward with my business. And then I got the flu. So that just put a great big break on me because I was sick. I had the sweats. I had the chills. I was um, in bed, you know, freezing under three blankets, fully dressed. You know, I was, I was actually properly sick and luckily it didn't last long, but it was long enough for me to, you know, really just take a break. And it happened to be right at the time school holidays started. My parents arrived for the first holiday that they've had, the first time they've seen us since before COVID started because they live in a different country and we just haven't been able to see each other. And so all of this combined into me ending up having a good three or four weeks where I was doing the bare minimum in my business. I was showing up to the sessions with my clients. I was, of course, supporting people in my business jam program in the group. Um, I was showing up to the things I'd committed to, but I was doing nothing else. I wasn't starting any new ideas. I wasn't really getting on social media. I was using content I already had um, to keep things going. You know, I really took the pedal off big time. And that gave me a lot of space to think. And this was when I actually started to consider these signs that I'd had that I'd just started to become aware of that I'd been ignoring for so long. And, and I started to examine them. And that's when I realized, you know, wow, I'd been pushing so hard to get somewhere that I didn't realize that I was already getting there. And it didn't need to be that hard. I actually didn't need to push, push, push. And maybe if I got rid of some of these rocks off my back, 
I would actually be able to get there a bit faster because I'd have more energy. <laughs> I would actually allow myself to get there faster. Stop putting more rocks on my back because I'm really great at seeing an opportunity or an idea and thinking, yep, it's got to be done. I've just got to do it. And so what I've been doing when I look back now over the last few years was adding rocks to my back, but not taking any off. And it got to that point. Yeah, I got sick. <laughs> I got the flu like it was going around, but clearly it was again for me a, a big sign that I've been building up to all year that this was time to make a change. That way that I'd been approaching my business, the view that I had on it and how I saw it, I'd got to the end of that road. I kind of got to the end of that path and saw, well, I've tried that. I have literally tried my heart out doing all of these things. And yet, Yes, I am getting somewhere. Yes, I've had great success that, you know, I was partly not even having time to acknowledge, but I suddenly had that clear vision, like the clouds parted. And I thought it doesn't have to be that heavy. It doesn't have to be that hard. And here's the critical factor that I really became starkly aware of. I had fallen out of alignment with my own intention. And that was a huge sign to me. Wow, it's time to do some big shifts. It's time to make some changes and it's time to start the new chapter because I can see so clearly what I had been doing that had been holding me back from getting where I wanted to faster. And the fact that I'd fallen out of alignment with my intention meant that I was really stopping myself from getting there. Now, what does that mean? You might ask. So my intention when I started this business was that I wanted to work on my own terms. You know, yes, that's a very cliched saying, but I honestly was like, I want to have my cake. I want to eat it too. I want to be a, a mum who can drop my kids off at school, pick them up, take them to after school sports, give them the opportunity, the life and freedom of their parents being around. And I also want to be highly successful in my career. I want to be making an impact in the world. I don't want to just be sitting in an office making shareholders richer. I want to be out there making a difference and making an impact for other people, you know, people who I know I can help with what I've learned in my life, in my professional life. There was so much that I had to give and sitting in the corporate job where I had been before I started of this business, I wasn't getting a chance to, to shine. I wasn't getting a chance to give the value that I had to give. It's very unfulfilling to be in that position. So my intention starting this business was, you know, really twofold. I wanted to have the lifestyle. I wanted to have time for me. I wanted to be able to exercise, be fit, be healthy, have a successful business and be a great mum. And I didn't see any reason why I couldn't have all of that. So I designed my business to give me that outcome and I, I got it literally. I had this business where it was working exactly like that within the first year. But that's what I realized this year was I, it had got to a point, both kids at school and I had more time to work on my business, which is great, but I'd also been taking on a lot. I'd been saying yes to things that made a lot of sense that I wanted to do that were very aligned for my business, but I'd fallen out of alignment with my intention of my business. And that clearly was causing a situation where I wasn't energetically in the right place for my business and for my clients because I was stretching myself way too thin. I'm not at my best when I'm stretched thin. I'm at my best when I have time to do the things that make me feel good. And for me, that's getting outdoors and exercising, um, you know, and having that clear mind that the, you know, a fit and healthy body makes a big difference to me. So that's really important for me. And that was that catalyst for change. And so I decided right then and there, right, this is time. This is time for the new chapter. What does the new chapter hold? What is the story of the new chapter? Well, the new chapter for me was now that I have these different goggles on. I've got a different vision. I'm looking, you know, maybe it was nighttime and before I'd been trying to see with my normal eyes and now I've got night vision goggles on. I can see so much clearer. And it was about what do I need to get rid of? What do I need to drop in my business that is causing me to feel heavy, that's causing me to go slow, that I can stop doing and I can then focus on 
the things that really are aligned with my intention, aligned with the vision and the goals that I've set for myself and why I'm even here in the first place. So I made a really hard call, which was to put my group coaching program, the Momentum Club, which is like a higher level 12 month program, decided to put that on the shelf for a year. Not because I didn't love it. I absolutely do love it. And we had some amazing results, but it just was coming up to the end of that first 12 months for that group that was in there right now. And I thought, you know, this is a great time to either start it up again, you know, go for the next year or pause it. And there was no reason why not pause it. So I decided to do that. That was one thing. And as soon as I did, wow, I felt a huge weight lift off my shoulders. And that to me was a really good sign that I was on the right path. I was getting back into alignment with my intentions. The next thing I looked at, you know, where else can I lighten the load? What else can I do? And, you know, I I made some calls about things that I've been doing in my business that were, had become business as usual. So, you know, become part of the process, just what we were doing. But I started examining what it was that we were doing in the business. Did I really need to do that? Did I really need this? What value is it bringing to me? And I made some decisions about things that I would stop doing then. And this is, I guess, the relevant part of the podcast was looking at the podcast, which is fantastic. Uh, It has been the best thing that I've, you know, one of the rocks that I definitely put on last year that I decided I was going to do, but it's one of the rocks I've decided I wanted to continue to carry and for good reason, because you know, I've, I've really found that this is something I love and enjoy, you know, so much more than any other form of content creation I was doing. So the podcast is staying, but you know, it was feeling a little bit heavy when I examined it. So how could I make it lighter? And I decided that I'd been doing two episodes a week since I started, which is great. I mean, you know, it's so much fun. But that's a lot for a business of my size. It is a lot for someone with a a really small team. And, you know, now that I want to get slipped back into my lifestyle design and, and having less hours in the business, then, you know, maybe two a week could be halved and it'd be one a week, which is still really consistent, really regular. But that suddenly feels so much easier to be able to commit to and to be able to actually do that without it feeling stressful or heavy. So I made the decision once I got to 100 episodes, then I was going to drop the podcast episodes down to one per week. And that's one of the changes that is coming right up in this podcast. So as of next week, we're going to just have one episode per week. And I will alternate those between guest episodes and my own little stories and anecdotes like I have been. So, you know, the format will remain the same. We're just dropping to one a week, which is going to feel really great. The other thing that I decided to do for the new chapter of the podcast, and this is something I've had in the back of my mind for a while, but I've decided that I would invite a few male guests onto the podcast where I, you know, really had a great connection with, where they've got some relevant insights, uh, content, something to bring that is very aligned with, with me, with this audience, with what this podcast is about. So that's another exciting change. And I've got a fantastic episode coming up in a couple of weeks time. When my very first male guest, I've already recorded the interview with him and it is a really powerful, powerful episode and something that every business needs. And he is 100% an expert in this area. We had an amazing chat And, um, you know, I know that you're going to absolutely love the episode as much as I do. And that, yeah, you'll know that there'll there'll be the odd male guest that pops in every now and then um, where I've invited them to come and share something super powerful with you. So that's what's happening in the next chapter of She's the Business podcast. And yes, this was all brought about because of my own starting of my new chapter in my business, where it is about less work, more life 
what do I really need to be doing to get to the goal and the intention that I've set for my business? Some of the questions that you could ask yourself if you're thinking, well, wow, I, it is feeling hard in my business right now. It's feeling heavy. I'm not loving everything. It's not feeling light and easy like it should be. Uh, then here are some of the questions that I ask myself that help me to come to these answers, that help me to gain that awareness um, around what was going on and what could change potentially. So obviously one of them is, you know, firstly, what is what is your intention that you've set out to create? And are you aligned to it? How could you be more aligned to that intention? What would it take? Then is there anything that you need to let go of in order to get there? Is there anything that you're currently doing that you're holding on to for some reason that actually isn't aligned to your intention that you may need to let go of? And is there anything that you've been avoiding or ignoring that has maybe been showing up that's causing things to feel heavy, to feel stressful, for you to feel like it's a burden that you could address? You could maybe get rid of. It might mean it's something that you start doing. Maybe it's something you stop doing, but something that you've been avoiding that could show you where you're out of alignment with what it is that your real intentions are here in your business. Those are some questions that, that you can ask yourself. You know, how can you make it easier? That's another one. How can you make it easier? Now, I will share something else with you. I haven't really shared this publicly yet, but a lot of my decisions have actually been based around some circumstances that I'm going to have by the end of this year. And this is because my family and I, as in my husband and I decided we're taking the kids on a big caravan trip and we're going to go around the whole outside of Australia. It's going to take us about seven or eight months. So we're literally packing up our life and we're going to go in a caravan and, and we're going to do some remote learning with school and I'm taking my business on the road. So that's meant that I've actually had to get really uh, critical and practical about the decisions I'm making for my business because not only do I want to make it feel easier and lighter I also want it to be something that I can commit to the promises that I make are absolutely things that I can um, achieve and follow through even if we are traveling in a caravan around Australia and yes there are some extremely remote parts of the country given that we have an online business there may be times where there's a day or two here and there where we're out of signal where I don't have internet access so I needed to be making those decisions based on what's going to happen and the fact that it's not going to be forever this is just for a short period of time so this has opened up so much possibility in thinking well what's going to be a great fit for me in running my business, how it can feel light and easy and how it can still continue to evolve and grow even while I'm traveling in a caravan, which I'm so excited about. I'm really, I'm going to be coming to you for the podcast from all over Australia. I'll definitely have some great stories to share, I'm sure, and um, some awesome photos on Instagram as well. So if you're not already following me there, then, you know, hop along and um, and follow my account and um, hopefully you can enjoy some of my holiday snaps once that all happens. Um, we're still a few months away from leaving yet, but uh, we will get the caravan soon. So I will be starting to share more in my stories and on the, on the feed as well about this adventure. Um, you know, and really this is going to be the ultimate, ultimate test of the flexible lifestyle business because from up until now, I've had it as something that I work on from home and I work within those hours that my kids are at school. Um, you know, I certainly fit in lots of other stuff as well in those time in that time. But this is going to be taking the business um, literally on the road <laughs> in a caravan where, you know, we we have mobile internet. So it is going to be super interesting. And that's why I'm making changes to make it easier, to make the business easier, to make it aligned with my intentions. And um, that is my new chapter. So thank you for listening. Hope this has been an insightful episode for you. And, you know, maybe to be thinking, where are you at right now? Are you in a growth phase where you're in a chapter and, and you've got lots of lessons that you're learning and insights that you're gathering? 
And, you know, or maybe are you also nearing the end of a chapter and ready to start a new one? And what might your new chapter be about? What is your intention for that new chapter? Let's write the story and then you can live it out. <laughs> so thank you for listening. I hope you have a wonderful um, rest of your week. You will hear me again next week. The episode will come out midweek as we have been all year and that midweek episode will continue. So you'll be definitely hearing from me every week and next week you we've got an amazing guest episode that is coming out to you and that's it for me so thank you and bye thank you for listening to she's the business as always if you've got any comments or questions or even a review I'd love you to drop me a review on Apple podcasts you know just scroll down to the bottom of the show page and um, pop your five stars in and write me a note love to hear that and yeah feel free to reach out I also invite people who think they'd be a great guest for the show on my website you'll find a guest application form that you could complete and you know, I, I review all of those and I select the guests, you know, who will be a great fit for the show. And we can have a look at what your episode topic might be. So that's it from me. I'll talk soon and thank you. Do you know what the number one challenge reported by the women joining my Facebook community, My Tribe, said that they were struggling with, with their marketing in 2021. And in fact, even in 2020 as well. And that was exactly how they should reach their ideal client. How do they even get in front of them in order to build their audience in the first place? That was it. And it wasn't a pick and mix. Um, I didn't give them that answer. It was a free text question. So they could write in there anything they wanted at all. And the number of times that I saw somebody say how to create awareness, how to get in front of my ideal client and build my audience. So many people just challenged by it and why is that when there's such an abundance of ways that we can get in front of the ideal client and I think it's probably that is exactly it it's so overwhelming isn't it what should you do what should you choose what are the best ways whatever it is that you're doing right now might not be working and I think it's a great time to sit back reflect and figure out what's the right way for you to do it what are the ways that you're going to reach your prospective clients in 2022. So if that sounds like you, if that might have been what you wrote down in the questions on what is your biggest challenge with your marketing currently, then you're going to absolutely love the new freebie that I've just put together for you. It's called 12 Brilliant Ways to Reach Your Ideal Client. And in it, I share with you the 12 in my view, 12 top ways that you could use in your marketing plan this year to reach a bigger, broader audience in order to attract those ideal clients in to your inner circle, into your you know, really well-defined audience and become real leads for you. So if you'd like to get your hands on this brand new freebie, then all you need to do is go to jessicaosborne.com slash 12 ways. So it's one, two ways. Very easy. You can download it there. And this is a little bit of great resource for your planning, for the planning of the new year. Um, see what you're going to change up. What is it that you maybe haven't been doing that you could be doing? And what are those things that you've been doing but they're not very effective? And maybe you're going to drop them out of your plan this year. So please head over, grab the freebie. Um, if you want the link that it's in the show notes and let's get you moving on up, having more success with your marketing in 2022.